ended up as our academic superintendent. I saw Dr. Lindsey Judd. Lindsey, if you would uh, step out there where they can see you. Uh, Karen Farley that works with our young children is right here. Uh, we stand ready if there are things that you need to channel through us to um, serve our community and our school. As most of you know, there is a swingers club, which I'm not even sure exactly what that is. Uh, seeking to locate in Davidson County in a Madison neighborhood in close proximity in a residential area to a school and local church. And uh, I think you can look around and see the folks that are here tonight. And we all know that's unacceptable. And so we're going to make every effort to uh, make that known to where it needs to be made known. This evening there's several key folks that are here that uh, we wanted to make sure and recognize right off. I especially want to thank our business leaders, uh, those close proximity to the school, but all over the Madison community. We thank you, and uh, we certainly appreciate the lead that our chamber president, uh, Debbie Massey. Debbie, if you will stand and raise your hand. Thank you so much for uh, galvanizing our folks that work in the great community of Madison. I want to publicly thank Karen Bennett. Uh, this was brought to our attention several weeks ago, and Karen has not ceased to call me, to get with me, to get with folks uh, in the community, to uh, wrestle this to the ground before it can even get started. So I want to right now say thank you to our councilperson, Karen Bennett, you show me your chair. Last week, we met with several key clergy people in the Madison North Nashville community. I want to thank Cornerstone Church for hosting that meeting. It became obvious that there was an outcry, an outrage uh, to this trying to come in and invest our community. Uh, through the meeting, uh, we determined some points of strategy. And I just want to reiterate these, and I'll do these again through the course of this evening. This community of leaders, our churches, our board at Good Pasture Christian School, our business leaders will spare no expense and no um, untoned, unturned over stone to find a way to keep this place from ever opening. And we want to reassure you that our energies are going to be spent that way and uh, we will exhaust every legal, every political, every type of resource that we can find. We will exhaust that resource. And we want the folks that are trying to become um, a cancer in our community to know that is not going to happen. And it will not happen. As we've looked at various ways to combat um, what this club is trying to do, we have been very blessed with a lot of our local leaders that are elected officials. And at this time, um, Karen's going to recognize those that are here tonight. We are so appreciative that you've taken your time to come out tonight. And then she'll also introduce who's going to do our invocation. Councilman Bibb. Thank you all for coming out tonight. I'm going to apologize up front. I've had that thing going around. The voice kind of comes and goes in a call. So I apologize. That's why we're doing elbow bumps, but I appreciate you taking the time to be here tonight. Uh, I serve with a great group of people on the Metro Council tonight. Uh, I noticed that Council Member Tim Gary is here. Tim, where are you? Over here in the corner. <laughs> Council Member Walter Hunt. Walter, where are you? There you go. <laughs> and Council Member Bill Pridemore here in Madison. <laughs> Did anybody else slip in that I didn't see? Okay, very good. Also tonight I would like to recognize Mr. J.D. Elliott, who has done so much in the Madison community. Mr. J.D., where are you? There you go. 
I also would like to recognize Miss Debbie Massey. She is the executive director of the Madison Rivergate Chamber. And the folks that let us meet here tonight, Commander Gordine, we really appreciate you and your staff. Also, we have Rose Robertson Smith from Discover Madison. Rose, where are you? And tonight signing you in was Sasha Mullins Lassiter. She's our local community activist, but I think she's still out front. But thank you guys. There she is. She's waving. I also spotted Mr. Rick Williams with Madison Nail. Rick, where are you? There you go. Big orange shirt. There you go. And last but not least, I am really pleased to introduce you to um, Pastor Davis, Pastor Maury Davis. He's going to do our invocation tonight, and uh, he is just an amazing man. I wish you'd come forward, please. issue, I realized that our churches needed to be involved, and not only are your city council people representatives here, some of the great pastors from churches in this community are here. I see Pastor Cowan over there, and if you travel across America, you see Pastor Cowan's TV program on all over the country. Faith is the Victory, one of our great churches, and Madison Church of Christ, just churches from all over here. And we, we have to realize the value of our moral life. One of our founding fathers said, we're writing this constitution for a moral and religious people. It's wholly inadequate for the government of any other. When we lose our moral values that are based upon our Judeo-Christian faith, we lose our ability to live within the freedoms this constitution gives. And when people want to take their personal freedoms and live in such a way that they damage, endanger, are confused, the youngest and most innocent among us, those of us with life experience and resources must stand up and say that's not acceptable, that's not tolerable, and that's not going to happen in our community. <laughs> looked at a group of men one day, and he said, how can we create anything lasting without imploring the God of heaven to help us? How do we do anything lasting tonight without God's help? Would you join me in prayer? Father, we thank you that you're with us. You never leave us or forsake us. You never fail us. You're always there. And you have a plan for moments like this. You have a plan to bridge denominational barriers. You have a plan to bridge racial barriers. You have a plan to bridge gender barriers, social barriers, educational barriers. You have a plan to bring us together for a cause. A cause that is for what this community will be over the next decade. Will we be a place where children are safe? Will we be a place where families come and grow and nurture the next generation? Will we, will we be a place where values are valued? Will we be a place that is a destination or a place of isolation? What we do tonight will make a difference. Help us, oh God to make the difference you want us to make. Let your wisdom be made manifest in this room tonight. Let the leaders of Good Pasture, the leaders of our community, and the people that support each one of them come together to glorify your name and to build a city that is representative of your values. I pray you would do it in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. Okay, on the agenda, the next portion is to discuss the timeline, and it's fairly short and sweet. Uh, I will just get to the point. In November, I was contacted by an anonymous person who told me that a swingers club was trying to come to Madison if they could purchase property. So they did provide me with quite a bit of information. Uh, that person may be in the room tonight. If you are, I appreciate you. Thank you for doing that. Uh, this person obviously had contact within the business of the Swingers Club, I guess is the best way I'll put it, and they sent me some really interesting information. The main concern that I had 
was, of course, that it's so close to Good Pasture. That's kind of the obvious. But we are working so hard to improve Madison and to make it the beautiful place it was when I was growing up. So we have worked together. Uh, I, I immediately contacted Ricky Perry over at Good Pasture just with my first concerns. And we discussed it. Um, he has been wonderful to work with. Good Pasture has been very, very supportive. Uh, from that point, I started contacting Metro representatives. I spoke with, uh, for example, traffic and parking, the particular inspector that would deal with this permit and decide how many parking spaces were needed. And I must say, I I'm not for what they're trying to do, but I'll be completely honest with you. They have legal rights too. And we need to make sure that what we do is appropriate as a Metro government. And we have to be respectful of the rights that they do have. So I'm going to ask everyone to please be respectful tonight. But as we discuss this issue, but we, I've discussed it with the fire marshal and each metro person that I have dealt with about this particular business, I've asked them to follow the letter of the law. Because let's face it, in the end, we'll probably get sued. It's what they do. But we want to make sure that we do things right. So. There may be folks in here, I've been contacted by constituents who support what they want to do. Not as many, obviously, that are against it, but still there are folks in this community that are for a swingers club and participate in the swingers club lifestyle. So the person sitting next to you may actually participate in that. And we want to be respectful of each other. I know everyone's looking around right now. <laughs> You're wondering, I know you are. I'll tell you right now, I'm not. So. <laughs> be very upfront. Tonight I have asked Bill Herbert to come out. And he is a Metro employee. He is the zoning administrator. And I ask for everybody to kind of temper what you're thinking and feeling because it's hard. We're Metro employees and we do have to follow the legal boundaries that we have. So Bill, would you come forward and everybody be nice, okay? Show them that as a nice. Give me my hand. that I would reinforce that we're here, those believers in the spirit of Jesus, so he is the messenger. Just remember that, Bill. Good evening, everybody. I'm Bill Herbert. I'm the zoning administrator, and sometimes I have the greatest job in the world, and sometimes I don't. And uh, tonight is one of those very, very tough um, issues. We um, at the Coast Department are very, very concerned about this issue. And as soon as we learned that it, uh, we have maintained that concern all the way through. Uh, the reason that, that I agreed to come tonight was to try to um, shed some light on the facts um, and the zoning law that has been brought to our office and how we must apply uh, the, the law to those facts. What we've got, I'm gonna take a couple steps back so that everybody kind of understands what the zoning process is. And so, um, Metro and Davidson County first got zoning back in the 1930s and it's evolved progressively ever since that time. Um, so what zoning is, is the, the Metro Council will establish where certain uses are allowed to go within the county. And so those uses are established as base zone districts. This base zone district is an office district. It's specifically, it's, it's, it's uh, OG, which is Office General. Within those particular districts, the Metro Council has delineated specifically which uses are allowed to go within each district. Obviously, you would not want to have a rock quarry come in right next to a single family res residence. That, that just wouldn't work. So the council, uh, through interaction with the planning department, has, has set out a plan for the progressive um, growth of, of Nashville and Davidson County. Um, this particular property that we're talking about is zoned Office General. And the Metro Council has dictated that clubs are a use that is permitted by right within that office general district. So we, what we have to do is look at you know, what is a club. And so we have to go by the definition of what the Metro Council has given to us. And 
A club is a facility that is for members and their guests only, and it's for social, cultural, or educational purposes. So the distinguishing factors that we've got here is it's for members and their guests only. It is not open to the general public. On the other hand, we've got adult entertainment. And adult entertainment is basically characterized by an establishment that's open to the general public um, and features live performances. So when somebody comes into our office and says that they want to get a permit to open up an establishment, we ask them, what is your establishment going to be? And if they say, we're going to be a club, then we look at the land use charts that's given to us by the Metro Council, and if a club is something that is allowed by right, then we make the application for the permit. Now, that brings me specifically to this permit. This permit is not ready to be issued, and it has not been issued. There's an application for the permit. We have not received any plans. Obviously, since we haven't received plans, those plans have not been reviewed. They would, have, they would need to be reviewed by our building division and by our fire marshal's office. So, as we talk right now, there is no permit. Without that permit, there's no legal ability to open this establishment. Typically, our plan review process is running at about a three to four week time frame, something like that. So, if we receive plans tomorrow, it would be three to four weeks before those plans could be reviewed and even if they were approved at that time. So, um, what I'll, can hold our, our questions to the so I wanted to explain the process and so what we've got is we've got this particular property, the area around that property is zoned for a club and the applicant has come in and made an application to operate a club at this location. Again, I'll, I'll reiterate, the permit has not been issued, so there's no legal, legal ability for it to open at this time. And I'm going to stick around, so Council Lady, I'm happy to field questions. I can try to field questions at the end or whatever you would like. <coughs> process is running at about three to four weeks right now typically speaking um, so what somebody would what they would need to do is submit a set of plans uh, because it's my understanding that this building was once a doctor's office so going from a medical office building to a club establishment is a change in use and whenever we have a change in use then the building code as well as the fire code require that a full set of plans be issued so they can be reviewed for this particular use in terms of the number of people who can be in this building, the parking requirements that would be necessary for that, and other regulations, you know, the fire code regulations. Are they suitable for this particular building? I don't know if this building is sprinklered or not, uh, but the fire marshal's office, when they affect the fire code, will take a look at those plans and make those determinations. But again, all of that is running in about three to four weeks right now in the process. So give me some nods of heads. Did that, did that kind of make sense how the process works? It comes in and then it has to go through different metro departments for approval before it's, I guess it's considered and then would be approved. Is that appropriate a way of saying it? What, what each of the, the departments that are tracked on the application will do will be to apply their particular code to this particular establishment. So. Uh, the first stop would be to come in and for zoning, which is my department. We would then check the zoning to see if a club is a use that's allowed at this particular location. If it is, then we will then approve on that application. Then we would send the application to the other departments. Uh, so it would have to go to the building department for review. Plans would need to be reviewed. It would go to the fire marshal's office for fire codes to be reviewed to see if it's compliant with the fire codes, the building codes, and the like. Okay. Uh, one other point that I think is important to notice, we did a little research, and since 2006, there have actually been how many clubs in Nashville? 57? Yeah, I was thinking about 46 or so. Oh, so sorry. Like okay. Uh, so still, as you can tell, there's not really many clubs in Nashville. There are some. 
that uh, provide gardening, um, art, that type of, of things in our community. So there are clubs that are positives as well. Um, there was a lady over here that had a question, and I, we were going to try to do questions at the end, but I would like to catch while Bill's up here. That's a very good question. Thank you for, for raising that. Um, adult entertainment uh, is is legally very sensitive, and um, so for Metro Nashville, uh, an overlay has been <coughs> placed over the county, which allows adult entertainment to operate within that overlay district. Um, so, and that overlay district is, is basically confined to that area near and around the downtown area. Adult entertainment cannot operate outside of the adult entertainment overlay. So, the question then becomes, is this proposed use adult entertainment or not? And if you look at the definitions under the zoning code that is provided to us by the council, Adult entertainment encompasses such things as adult bookstores, adult theaters, um, help me translate. Um, uh, but, but I think you pretty much covered it, really. Yeah, well, here's the big one. The big one uh, is adult nightclub. And so that's the establishment that, that you see in and around the downtown area. And so to be to be characterized and classified as adult entertainment, you have to meet the definition of it. So, adult entertainment nightclub would be the one that most closely uh, represents what this, what I have understood this establishment might be. And if you look at the definition of it, adult entertainment is characterized by live performances and adult entertainment is characterized by open to the general public. Those are the two main characteristics for adult entertainment. And if, if you're open to the general public and you have live performances, you can only operate within that adult entertainment overlay in and around the downtown area and nowhere else. So in this case, this entity has stated and told us that they are a club and that they are specifically not adult entertainment. Um, and so that's, and as a club, as we've discussed, they're permitted as a matter of right under the OG district. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I didn't need second amendment. Sorry, I wasn't talking about their gun rights. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> uh, free speech, obviously. One, one little thing that kind of helps correlate this a little bit is the problems that we have with the adult bookstores. We have the downtown uh, adult overlay, and you would think, well, that means they can't come out to Madison. But what they do is, is when they fought through the, the court process, as long as they have 50% plus one of non-adult, they're allowed there. And that's what these Jenna's and other stores are doing. They've got movies that you never want to rent or see crammed in their basement, and then 49% of their inventory is adult, and that's what they actually sell. And that's what the court system has actually given us them. There's a gentleman back here that raised his hand. Yes, sir. Oh, look, I'm not a large one. I'm just looking open to the general public. If you look at their website, you can buy a nightly membership for 10 bucks. 
That doesn't sound like private. Yes, I've noticed that. <laughs> I believe that would be an issue once they opened up. That would affect in the future. But we're facing right now. Yes, ma'am. Is the building they want to use, is that that whole building? I know, like, it's the building doctor over there, the pediatric dentist and everything. And there were several offices. So if they want the whole shebang, or are they just using one doctor? Behind that. It's a very large 22,000 plus square foot building. 520 Lynch Drive. I talked to everybody over here. We got anybody over here we need to address? Is there a possibility of uh, the council changing this definition? Um. If, if we can, let's talk about that in our in our future situation here. Who else on this side? We have in the in the permit application that we've made, we have put specifically on that application no alcohol. The zoning would have to be changed for that, correct? Correct, and they are in terms of um, a beer permit or the sale of beer. Um, they would not be able to get that by state law because of their proximity to a school. Now, just a footnote on that, the information that I received from the folks inside the Swinger World, they advertised that they were going to have a restaurant bar in there, which is not what they've applied for permit for. And that's correct. And we specifically put on the application, no restaurant, no alcohol. Thank you. What about all So it's close enough, but there's still question of STDs and other things that would probably happen in that environment. I don't know how to get to you, baby. I've got a loud voice. Okay. Um, going back to the alcohol question, um, you said no alcohol. The, the establishment downtown where it is now is a BYOB establishment, so there's no purchasing, but you can bring your own drinks. They, they provide mixers with it. Are you saying that would not be allowed or they would still be able to do that? Do you represent the beer board? <laughs> no, no, I don't. Um, and and I'm, I'm a little reluctant to, to go there, but I will say this. Um, the scope of the permit, when they told us what they were going to do, we specifically put on their permit application no alcohol allowed. Okay. What about sex offenders? That's not my area, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Commander Gordy, could you give us a <clears throat> reflection on that? Do you feel comfortable or am I putting you on the spot, sir? Oh, I'm evil, aren't I? I'm just terrible. That's what happens when you stay for a meeting, isn't it? <laughs> Something with sex offenders? Sex offenders being sex offenders? Still? Uh, that, that's a good question. I, I would imagine I would. That's not my. Do you monitor? Do you monitor the members? I mean, who monitors the members to know who? So I, I just have no information on that. That would be your probation officer. Right. That would be their probation officer that would actually keep track of that kind of thing. <laughs> Anybody on this side? Mr. Orange shirt, on my way. The question I have is under the city ordinance about nudity. Can they have nudity and stuff there? Bill, you got an answer for that one? Our ordinance just doesn't address that. <laughs> so, um, I think the key to it is consenting adults. It would be just like yep. being in their home. So I don't and, and think I, I agree with that. that. It's it's behind closed doors. It's not in the public per se. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. Okay. Anybody else? You ready to move on to the next portion? Oh, I see a hand. Okay. 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 He's back in the back. He's hiding. I'm 
That's my understanding. I think the permit process really doesn't include that. Um, Bill, you can jump in here and save me anytime you want. I, I think I can <laughs> save right there now. you go. <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. I appreciate that. I'm not an elected official, so maybe I can just go out there. I told them when I was taking my educational classes, we didn't talk about swingers clubs and these things when they're telling us how to teach math and how to handle school business. What you're seeing is there are people who can take a zoning and can take a set of criteria and they can work very cleverly to try to get what they want to develop. And it really puts our honest working people in a, in a very difficult spot because you're trying to respect their rights, but at the same time, common sense tells you this is not right. So we understand. We understand where you're coming from. What we need you to do, and I appreciate so much, Brother Davis, we serve a God who gives us a spirit and a mind to combat evil. Amen. And that's what we have to focus on. We need to let these folks do their job. It's a very difficult job. It's very difficult to be here tonight knowing the things that they know on both sides. But what I would encourage you to do is implore the Lord Jesus Christ to help us see clearly what we need to do to protect our young people, to allow them to have a wholesome, nurturing environment, but realize this issue has sides to it that I don't even understand. I've been talking with Karen for over a month now, so I want to reassure you, our board and our business leaders and our clergy are looking at every legal that respects the rights of these folks, but at the same time protects our children, and we're taking that to the highest level legally, and we're going to take it to the highest level politically, and yes, we do need to hold our public officials accountable for helping us find a way. If this does not meet the spirit of what these rules or laws or ordinances are, then we need to hold them accountable. And I love you guys, but that's what needs to happen. Here. Thank you, Bill. I, I appreciate it. I know this hasn't been fun. Um, there may be more questions, so don't run off. Don't, don't leave. I know you want to, but please don't. Okay. Uh, next on our agenda is discussing the petition drive that we have going right now, which is right now the best way for you to articulate how you feel on this issue. Sasha, are you back there? Come on up here, girl. Yeah, way up here in the front. Keep walking. <laughs> Sasha asked first, saying, what can I do? And I was like, ooh, put her to work. <laughs> yeah, put me to work. That's right. Jump in there, girl. Tell them what to do. Is this, how, is this mic on? Okay. Um, okay, so we have an online petition that's been going on for about I know, almost two weeks now. Um, when I left the house, we were at 1,750 signatures. And we're getting um, hard copy um, petitions circulated as well. And there's several... Um, hundred coming in off that and it's and who else who knows how many but this petition is really important to sign because and, and your presence here is really important because it just shows that we know what's going on in our community we love Madison we want the best for Madison this is not the best for Madison we all know we've had the black eyes with Madison and we're not having that anymore Madison is a jewel it's beautiful we got farmlands we've got beautiful towns and our little downtown and our river gate and all the beautiful mid-century ranches and our Pila Park. We don't want businesses that are going to hurt Madison and so it's really important to speak up and take control and take you know a stand for what you believe in and how you want Madison to look and be and feel. Um, and uh, I don't, am I allowed to ask a question? Sure. Here? Okay. 
Well, where's the fella that does this, this zoning code? Stuff? Oh, Bill? Herbert? Bill? Bill. Bill. <laughs> Hi, Bill. <laughs> He's trying to I have a question. My question's this. I'm, I serve on the National Next Engagement Committee representing Madison. And they, were, they are, are proposing new policy for that entire area to be called District Employment Center, which opens up a wealth of opportunity for Madison, which includes um, uh, residential, supportive retail, Class A you know, office buildings, light industrial, and of course medical. And this opens up jobs for our area, and everybody knows downtown is so congested, and we're trying to create more districts. And, for employment, and Madison is a gold mine for that. So what, how does this fit smack dab in the middle of that? I mean, what? who's gonna wanna come in and, and go, yeah, I wanna put my business there? The answer is, is that planning and zoning are two legally different entities. Okay. Departments, laws, sets of laws, codes. And while we work daily with the planning department, um, Nevertheless, it's distinct and different. So, from the planning department's perspective in terms of planning for the future for this area and their policy changes and all of that, that is the precedent for a code change, i.e. a zoning code change. Those, the, the policies um, are the basis by which zone changes can occur, if that makes sense. In other words, you, okay. need to, you need to look at and see how do you want the area to grow in the future? And then once you establish that, then the council can take a look at the specific zoning for specific properties that are located within that area and then perhaps rezone them to better fit what the plan is for the future. Okay, so um, like the entire National Next process that we all went through for three years and we told everybody what we wanted, so they came out with this amazing, wonderful policy called District Employment Center, which is like, yay jobs, yay, you know, maybe inclusionary zoning, housing, and all this other stuff that they wanted, but then you have something like this going in the middle of it all. Doesn't that, does that concern everybody over there at Metro? Are they concerned? Well, I don't no? think it's really fair because He's the zoning administration the administrator. It's not really his purview to do this. Oh, I'm sorry. But okay. I appreciate you asking the question. I don't know. It's, okay. it's good questions. It's yeah. just. It's no, it's a, it's, a very, it's a very good question, and I, and I appreciate it. And it's a question that we actually get all the time. My job is the enforcement arm of it. So the planning department sets the policies in the way they want the area to develop into the future. And then the council sets the zoning regulations, hopefully to further those policies. And then I will Okay. <coughs> All right. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. We need to make sure if you brought petitions, not have a folder up here, but Sasha is the keeper of petitions. I know some of you brought some. We want to get those in her hands. She has done a beautiful job of making the work. Thank you. 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 Thank uh, we have around 2,000, over 2,000. Okay, the next person that wants to uh, comment quickly is Ms. Rose Robertson-Smith. She is from Discover Madison. She's the new president. Welcome, Ms. Rose. Tonight is about bringing community together. And one of the things that you need to know about Madison is that we have a really awesome group called Discover Madison. And I just want to share a little bit about it so that you know some of the positive things that are happening in your community and places to reach out and help and support. Discover Madison, Inc. exists to celebrate, educate, promote, and preserve Madison, Tennessee through the historic Amway Station Visitor Center. How many people are aware of where that is and what it is? Okay, great. That's awesome. As many of you know, we are the community gathering place focused on quality of life, community vitality, and educational programming for the betterment of Madison and the surrounding area. 
Through our outreach and programming, we are committed to moving Madison forward as a healthy and viable community. And so we're here for you as well. Stop by the station and um, before we know it, it will be the first weekend in May and that brings our first farmer's market. Talk about healthy living. Come on down. <coughs> short on time and I want to respect what you've got so we've got several things to cover I do want to point out that we have Debbie Massey here from the Rivergate Madison Rivergate Chamber and they have been very supportive on this issue and the businesses they have been great to organize and I just want to thank you so much for what you do y'all give her a hand To convey to you, and I wanted to Nathan come up and say what the businesses want to tell you, and thank you for your support. I'm not going to be very long. Thank you for having us here tonight, Councilman Karen Bennett, past president of the chamber, founding president of DMI, an advocate that fought for the police precinct, which you uh, said in. Many of the council members are here tonight that helped establish this uh, this uh, this uh, beautiful facility. Thank you, council people, for doing that. <laughs> Very quickly, you know, for many, many years, uh, Sasha had alluded to the Nashville banks, but we used to do a little thing called a sub-area plan. Any of you ever participated in that in Metro Planning? Y'all see some hands here. That sub-area plan recognized this area, and it recognized this area as a, as a medical area, as a school, and apartments, and, and as the, uh, Sasha had alluded to, uh, some industrial. But very importantly, there was no adult entertainment or any kind of clubs of this nature mentioned in that area. I'm very concerned about that. And if you hadn't seen the facility that's been built there, let me tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, this plan is working. Go up on top of the hill and you're going to see a beautiful facility now called Nosy no College of Art. People are making a substantial investment in this area. We are heading the right direction. Let's keep that direction going. My name is Nathan Massey and Massey Electric Care in Madison. Thank you for all your hard work. I apologize. I know we've got so many people that would really, really love to speak. So I, I'm going to have to say, guys, please make it quick. But real quick, I want to recognize Rick Williams with Madison Now. Rick, could you share with us when you meet again? If you want to get involved in Madison, this is a great way to do it. Uh, our next meeting is February the 12th right here in this building at 630 and that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to change Madison back like it was when some of us grew up here. So if you want to come to the next meeting we have, it'll be February the 12th at 630. Thank you, Karen. Let's get back to the issue here. Okay, thank you. So sorry. Okay, the next section on our agenda is the future. And I'm going to try not to sound like a politician, but I'm going to have to sound like a politician. <laughs> And for that, I'm sorry, but it's just the reality of what we have. We are working on some things. We've asked a lot of questions of legal. We've asked a lot of questions of all of the Metro staff. And I, I cannot, for reasons of what we're dealing with, I cannot discuss it with you publicly. And I do apologize for that. But I do want you to know, we are working on the issue. And the council members uh, have been amazingly supportive on this issue, no one has said, I'm not touching that, or y'all come to me. Everyone has said, what can I do? What can I do to help Madison? So I think we're in good hands, but I really can't divulge what's going on. But we are working on it. Please remember, we are working on it. And, and again, I apologize for that. Um, we will need you, though, in the future. We will need you to step up to the plate, and we will let you know when that happens. So as you leave, if you would please sign in on the sign-in sheets. If you've got an email, that's great. I can shoot you an email and tell you what's going on as we progress, and I can tell you publicly what's going on. Right now, we're going to move to questions. We had a few earlier, but I imagine a few more have perked up. So Ricky and I are going to try to answer them, uh, along with Bill Herbert and anybody else that's here. And um, if you would raise your hand, if you could get to the point, because I know everybody's evening is, is passing away here. 
Thank you. I'll tell you to save our time and respect your time, I'm going to ask you to really project with your questions. If we don't quite get, I may restate that. Yes, sir. I understand this uh, same statement has tried to be here twice. Is that true? I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware of that either. Can you repeat the question? The question was uh, this establishment has tried to get in our area twice, and is that valid? But they said it's failed twice, and I'm not aware of that. Darren was not aware of that. Yes, see Sasha on the way out. She will be happy to give you copies of petitions or get your information and get them to you. She's amazing and she's a hard worker. Anybody else? I have one over here. Yes, ma'am. Really project. Karen, what other things can they do other than sign the petition? Right now, all I can tell you is we are working on it. We cannot discuss it publicly. It is going through the legal process. I apologize. Okay, so Patience, I guess. Is so calling you is, would not help? No, I'm on your side. I'm a graduate from Good Pasture, and right. I don't think they belong here. I think they have rights, right. and they have rights with their property, right. but I just don't think it's the right spot. Fair enough. Uh, and pray. That's, that's a good thing to do as well, is pray. Okay, I'm going to move back here. If the council decides to change the zoning and definition of the club, and that gets approved, will that affect these folks that apply for this when you club? Depending on how it's worded, that would be the goal. You have to be really careful with people in the adult, I don't say entertainment, because I don't know what else you call it, industry that uh, the sex industry is just boy they are more than willing to sue at a drop of a hat and you have to make sure everything's right that's why i'm trying to do the right job and work with legal legal and, and do the right thing there was somebody over here a gentleman there he is is it only for madison people or is it for what is it what does it you know he if wants, you're outside the county i'm sure it don't he wants to know if the petition works if you're outside the county or from another area I mean, signatures are always wonderful to have, and it shows support. What I would want you to know is, is this issue could happen anywhere in Davidson County or any county or any um, municipality where they don't have zoning laws or things that speak to this. I do want to speak to another point of strategy that we don't think is going to be necessary, but in talking to uh, Councilman Garrett, uh, if we're not able to keep this thing from opening, which we think we will, uh, we need to add a lot of lighting and videotape equipment to that side of our campus to capture people coming and going. So, please make sure that folks that are thinking that way that would like to do so in an anonymity, uh, that's not going to be possible. <laughs> If there's a positive, is I got to run into all my own classmates at Good Pastor. So let me introduce you to Jennifer. Jennifer. Hi. I was just wondering, has the building permit been pulled or not? Bill Herbert, do you want to answer that one? An application for a permit has been made. The permit has not been issued. There should be no work going on over there. It's going on for sure. Okay. I, I appreciate that information. And I'm a witness. I just didn't know that. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Dr. Dozier has a question. It's not a question. It's a statement. I've been in practice here for 20 years. My property is about 30 feet. This, whatever it is, it's going to move next door. You can use my property. We'll take pictures. I'll buy floodlights. <laughs> children went to Good Pasture School. And Good Pasture School has been a beacon of light in this community. We produce godly men, women, doctors, lawyers, teachers. And now we want this darkness to come into our community and damage the school. I have to tell you, if I had children in Good Pasture now, and this thing were there, I'd be tempted to take them out. And so will a lot of other parents. We don't want this darkness to damage the beacon of light that's been here for years and years and years. Edmund Burke said many years ago, if good men and women don't stand up 
and oppose evil, then they shouldn't complain about the consequences. Right. So if that means that we come, people come to you and open, you need to open your wallet, you need to do whatever's needed, we've got to defeat this thing. covered everything. If you have additional questions, I know Ricky and I are going to say afterwards, imagine Bill wants to go home, bless his heart. He's, he's doing this on his time. Aren't you? Uh, should, should I call the budget? Oh, anyway, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Ricky. We want to thank everyone for being here this evening. Just as we close, I want to ask, uh, and I saw it here and he may have slipped out, is uh, Pastor Sandy McLean, is he still here? He was here just a few minutes ago. Yeah. Oh, he stepped out. That's okay. I believe it's the goal of and the best interest of our community that the doors of this establishment never open. I firmly believe with our combined best efforts, they will not open at 520 Lens. Again, our community, our churches, our school are determined to defeat this threat before they ever open. Please join our business partners, our elected representatives, our good pasture family of current families, alumni, faculty, and staff to rid our community of this threat. I will remind each one of us as we depart tonight, righteousness exalts a nation. And we could say righteousness exalts a community. Thank you and go in peace.